Chris Priestley is doing what he does best, making coffee. These days, the drug of choice of the 90s affords him a successful living. So successful, in fact, that tonight he's opening his fifth cafe. It's part of a burgeoning coffee empire that includes one of Auckland's busiest cafes and a wholesale coffee operation. Chris Priestley has based his business on his strong social skills. It's a strength which has seen him develop his talents from music to food to coffee. But music was and still is his first love. It's the thread that pulls together the fabric of his life. It's why he started his first business 13 years ago when he opened Real Groovy Records with a mate. Well, I think I'd always uh, fancied the idea of one day having a cafe and when, when it was time to move on, from Real Groovy Records, um, I figured yeah, that was the time I had the music and the, and the energy and a little bit of capital. In 1985, the result was Java Jive. In fact, there were two. The first, at the top of Auckland's College Hill, was sold after 18 months for $250,000. In 1989, it made way for Java Jive Mark II in Ponsonby. It heralded the start of a group of faithful followers who trailed Chris from one cafe to another. But after three years of nights, it all began to get a bit much. Chris realised it was time for a change of lifestyle and a change of business. He set his sights on a daytime cafe. It was the late nights, uh, three or four o'clock in the morning finishes, and, and the occasional drunk. I decided that I didn't like drunks. So, uh, daytime would be much more me, I think. While he was looking for the right location for his daytime cafe, Chris became a regular customer of coffee guru, Craig Miller. When he became short of staff, uh, I helped him out for a while, on the understanding that I was always on my way to opening another. I was sort of experienced in the, in the people side of things, I suppose, and, uh, and brought a lot of good music with me, and, uh, but learned, learned a lot from him. Chris graduated as a fully-fledged coffee maker when he opened Kirouac's in the High Street in 1991 with Mark Nicholson, a former sous chef at the Regent. But after 18 months, Mark got sick of cooking eggs Benedict. Ponsonby beckoned once again. Kirouac's was very small and very was particularly crowded, which was nice, but, but I always liked the, the more um, suburban feel of Ponsonby and the old buildings and, and the people, the more relaxed. When he opened his night spots, Chris didn't believe a daytime place would work in a suburb like Ponsonby. But the time was right. The Atomic was launched. Into the mix came chef Cheryl Beer, who'd worked with Chris at Java Jive, Miller's and Kerouac. She had a 20% share. As well, there was silent partner Dave Thomas. This time, to be economic, Chris knew they had to buy their own roaster. I knew that we were spending $120-odd a day on coffee from Craig at wholesale and uh, and I knew that coffee in those days was only seven or eight dollars a kilo to buy and so I figured it, with that amount of turnover uh, it would pay it for itself fairly quickly and save us a lot of money. A new roaster cost twenty thousand dollars but pilot Dave Thomas found the second hand one in the US for seven thousand. It paid for itself in four months so he was selling coffee not only to customers but wholesalers as well. Buying this roaster was a turning point. It meant Chris could wholesale his coffee. So much so, in fact, that these days he's selling more than a thousand kilos a month around the country. In fact, revenue from coffee sales exceeds that of the cafe operation. Lunch times and evenings were traditionally the busy times in the cafe trade, but Chris found a way to lure comers in the off-peak hours. He opened his cafe at 7 o'clock to catch the breakfast trade and put in a sandpit for children out the back so their parents could sit and drink coffee. We put one in here because I knew that my children would like it, and therefore uh, there must be uh, lots of other people that would. And, I mean, it's, it just works so well. Uh, in the normal quiet period of the day, in the mid-morning, mid-afternoon while we're, we're full of prams. Another passion is patonk, the French form of bowls. Chris is a New Zealand champion and plays every Thursday in the bowling ground behind the cafe. Atomic's burgeoning success has seen it bursting through a backyard fence into the next door property, a bookshop. Similarly, his new Balmoral cafe shares a hole in the wall with the deli next door, as well as the trademark sandpit. 
Now that the new shop has a 12 kilo roaster, the demand for Atomics coffee can be met. There's now plans to set up a mail order service. In 13 years, Chris Priestley has become the king of cafe society. By taking a wide number of interests and integrating them into his life, he's created a string of successful businesses. So, how's he done it? He found a way to drive trends, first with his music, then with his cafes, and lately with coffee. His touch with people has almost seen a return to the old-fashioned coffee houses of a century ago, where people enjoy coffee, a social atmosphere, and good music. People sort of say, oh, you must have travelled around Europe um, to get all these ideas, but, but I've actually never been to Europe. I've been to Wollongong three times to visit our friends over there, but that's the only place I've ever been out of New Zealand. So it's, it's just, yeah, ideas that sort of pop, pop into my head. Coffee in the mornings, uh, with anybody that has the blues, which we all get from time to time, is an excellent pick-me-up. But for somebody who has severe anxiety can make that condition worse. And there's the rub. Too much coffee or coffee in the wrong hands can be a real downer. I tend to um, get accident prone, drop things. I can't hold on to things. I'm shaking. Get hyped up. Um, can't sit still. Wired. I think we'd describe it. Yeah. Definitely wired. Well, the first...